Hello again, everybody. Welcome to USA Wrestling Weekly. I'm Scott Casper. It's time for this week's news and features from USA Wrestling, the national governing body of our sport. Well, just one week after leading Penn State to the NCAA Division I team title as its head coach, Cale Sanderson made big news by stepping onto the mat as an athlete. Sanderson competed for the first time since winning Olympic gold in freestyle at the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens. He entered at 211 pounds at the Northeast Senior Regional Championship held at the college at Brockport, New York last weekend. Well, Sanderson didn't give up a point in three matches, winning all three of them by Tech Fall. The coach stopped former Oklahoma State All-American Jack Jensen of the Gator Wrestling Club 6-0-6-0 in the final bout. Sanderson told us that the tournament was just for fun. Wrestling fans in attendance had a rare chance to see an Olympic champion in competition. Champions at the event qualified for the 2011 World Team Trials to be held in Oklahoma City in June, and only Sanderson knows if he'll take the next step. Also performing well and winning was 2009 U.S. World Team member Jake Varner at 286 pounds. Jake normally competes at 211 pounds. He beat Ithaca's Matthew Mahon 6-0-9-0 in the finals. Varner continues his training under Sanderson at the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. 20-year-old Logan Stever of the Ohio RTC in the New York Athletic Club won at 132 pounds, defeating Nick Fanthorpe in the finals 3-1-2-0. Other freestyle champions were Mark McKnight at 121 pounds for the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club, Todd Manili at 145 pounds, and Matt Moley at 163 pounds, and the former Missouri Tiger Max Askren at 185 pounds. In Greco-Roman 2008 Olympian Spencer Mango competed for the first time as a member of the U.S. Army World Class Athlete Program. Competing up a weight, he beat Donovan DePato at the 132-pound finals, 0-1-6-0-7-0. The All-Marine wrestling team had three champions there in Greco-Roman, John Cox at 145, Don Simmons at 185 pounds, and Moyes Hernandez at 211 pounds. Other champions included Tyler Erdman at 121, Anton Gottfriedson at 163, and Akil Patterson at 264 pounds. Well, the first USA Wrestling National Event of the Year took place last weekend as the nation's top girl folk style wrestlers competed in the USA Wrestling Girls Folk Style Nationals at Oklahoma City University. Winning a junior folk style national title for the second straight year was Jenna Burkett of New York, who pinned Krista Ravelli at 5 minutes 46 seconds in the 139 pound finals. Burkett was the champion at 138 pounds last year, while Ravelli was third. Burkett was the 2010 ASICS Girls High School Wrestler of the Year as well. Well, this marked the first year in which there were both junior and cadet divisions in the event. Kayla Miracle of Indiana was able to win golds in both divisions. She opened the gold medal round by winning the cadet title at 108 pounds when she pinned Holly Heron a minute 28 into the bout. She then walked to the next mat for the junior finals at 105 pounds where she defeated returning folk style national runner-up Hannah Grice Wood. Four, zero. Well, three runners-up from last year's junior event won titles this year. Emily Webster of Missouri won by major decision in the 97-pound finals over Ashley Liff, 9-0. California's Amanda Hendy pinned Anna McAlevey at 5 minutes 26 in the 130-pound finals. Dorothy Scott pinned Brenna Ramirez 3 minutes 28 seconds into the championship bout at 172 pounds. Winning a highly competitive junior 159-pound division in a dominating style was Michigan's Julia Salata. Julia, competing for Advantage Wrestling, is a two-time Junior Nationals freestyle champion who won by major decision over Savannah Nichols of the Arcata Bad Boys Club 15-1. That one in the finals as well. Salata won her opening match by major decision over 2010 Junior Nationals freestyle champion Kim Spiegel, then scored a tech fall in the semifinals over 2010 Girls Junior Folk Style champion Brittany Barbosa. Salata was named the Matt.com Wrestler of the Week for her tremendous performance. One of the star performers on Saturday was Cassie Herkelman of Team Iowa, who won a cadet gold medal and a junior silver medal as well. Herkelman opened with a cadet title at 115 pounds, pinning Paige Gasper at a minute 14. In the junior finals at 112, she lost to Samantha Klingel of Pennsylvania by pin 5 minutes 40 
seconds. Champions were also crowned in the schoolgirl division as well as two girls age group divisions. Nine of the young women who were champions last year at this event were also able to emerge as individual champs again this year. On the final day of the event, a girls folk style duels was held on the junior level. California claimed the team title with a 3-0 record followed by Michigan in second place with a 2-1 record. Young women at the Girls Folk Style Nationals in Oklahoma City were able to participate in a free clinic as part of the Marcy Van Dusen Technique Tour for 2011. Van Dusen was a 2008 Olympian, 2007 World Team member, and is now the head coach of the women's wrestling team at Menlo College. Hundreds of wrestlers, coaches, and parents watched Van Dusen as she provided high-quality instruction as well as an inspirational message to the young athletes. Afterwards, Van Dusen signed autographs and gave out free t-shirts to the young girl wrestlers. Well, the Technique Tour is sponsored by longtime wrestling supporter Arno Neiman, who has sponsored Women's Freestyle Team USA since 2003. Neiman has been awarded the Order of Merit from the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, and deservedly so. Van Dusen will be giving Technique Clinics in Frisco, Texas, April 17th, in Kissimmee, Florida, on May 14th, in West Covina, California, on May 21st, and in Fargo, North Dakota, on July 17th. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is USA Wrestling Weekly. Before weapons of mass destruction, we struggled hand to hand. Before we fought from a distance, our battles were up close and personal. Join us April 7th to 10th in Cleveland, Ohio, when the world's oldest combat gets new again at the 2011 ASICS US Open. Brought to you by ASICS, the official sponsor of USA Wrestling's national teams. Reserve your tickets now. Each season, Liberty Mutual's Responsible Sports Community Grant Program awards $65,000 to youth sports organizations and school sports programs that demonstrate their commitment to responsibility in youth sports. Your organization could be one of our 20 winners this season. It's easy. Simply visit ResponsibleSports.com and click on the Community Grant Program. Administrators register their organization with the program, then reach out to rally parents, coaches, and team supporters to log on and review either the Responsible Sports Parenting or Responsible Coaching Guide. Then complete the quiz and showcase your mastery of the concepts. Every successfully passed quiz is worth a point that you can credit to your favorite youth sports organization or school sports program. Connect with friends, family, and neighbors to rally more support. The teams and schools with the most points at the end of the grant period win. It's that simple. Watch the leaderboard throughout the grant season, then rally more of your supporters to increase your totals. Liberty Mutual is committed to celebrating and championing youth sports and to financially supporting organizations that demonstrate their commitment to responsible sports. Join the movement and start earning points toward your community grant. Win Magazine has announced that University of Nebraska star Jordan Burroughs has been awarded the Hodge Trophy. The trophy was created in 1995 by wrestling historian Mike Chapman, the founder of Win Magazine, to honor the season's outstanding collegiate wrestler. Well, it's grown in popularity and is now often referred to on a national level as the Heisman Trophy of Wrestling. Burroughs compiled an amazing 36-0 record this season and captured a second NCAA crown with an 11-3 triumph in the 165-pound finals over Tyler Caldwell of Oklahoma. The Nebraska senior won all four of his tournament matches by major decision and also received an injury default. With the title, Burroughs became Nebraska's first two-time NCAA champion. He had only three matches this season that didn't end by pin, tech fall, or major decision. That included a 10-7 victory over Wisconsin's defending NCAA champion Andrew Howe, that one at the Midlands. In the selection process, Jordan Oliver of Oklahoma State was second, Anthony Robles of Arizona State was third, John Reeder of Iowa State was fourth, and Kellen Russell of Michigan was fifth. It had to have been awfully close. The award is named in honor of legendary wrestler Dan Hodge, who was undefeated during his three-year career at Oklahoma University. After winning his NCAA title in Philadelphia, Burroughs talked about wrestling in this year's U.S. Open in freestyle and of his desire to compete many years in his quest of world and Olympic titles. Yeah, I'll be at the U.S. Open in two weeks. Uh, we actually have spring break from school this upcoming week, so I'm just going to take a week off and just rest and uh, hang out with my friends and family and then uh, get back to work immediately trying to win some gold medals for the U.S. and uh, make some money for my bank account. As, as far as my body takes me, man, uh, wrestling's my life. 
you know, if uh, someone asked me who I was, I would just describe myself as a wrestler, you know, one word. And uh, it's what I love to do. It's uh, my occupation, it's my, my heart and uh, my desire and passion. So I'm gonna do it as long as my body can take me. And uh, then after that, I'll probably still be wrestling past my prime. This week, Bruce Baumgartner gets the nod in our Wrestling Greats profile. The legendary big man is a two-time Olympic champion and a three-time world champ in freestyle wrestling. With the international season now underway, we remember the American athlete with the most achievements on the Olympic level. Wrestling at heavyweight, Baumgartner competed in four Olympic Games, winning gold medals in 1984 and 1992, a silver medal in 1988, and a bronze medal in 1996. Only eight U.S. Olympians have ever medaled in four Olympic Games, making Baumgartner one of the greatest ever in any sport. Baumgartner was elected by his Olympic peers to serve as the flag bearer for the U.S. at the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, the sight of Baumgartner leading the U.S. is etched into this reporter's memory as one of my personal favorite Olympic memories of all time. Well, in addition to Olympic success, Baumgartner won nine world championship titles during his career, giving him an amazing 13 career world and Olympic medals in wrestling, the most in history. Included were three world championship gold medals in 86, 93, and 1995. Bruce won all of the major events in wrestling, including the World Cup, the Pan American Games, and the Goodwill Games. He also won many major awards, including the 1995 James E. Sullivan Award as the nation's top amateur athlete. He was elected to the National Wrestling Hall of Fame in 2002 and became only the second wrestler inducted into the U.S. Olympic Hall of Fame in 2008. Now the director of athletics at Edinburgh University, he served for many years as the head wrestling coach there for that Division I power. Baumgartner was an NCAA Division I champion for Indiana State University, originally hailing from New Jersey, his home. Bruce was a junior nationals freestyle champion in 1978. He also served two terms as president of USA Wrestling. You can download action and technique video of wrestling legends and more when you visit our friends at thewrestlinggreats.com. You're watching USA Wrestling Weekly. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Nate Carr, and you're watching USA Wrestling Weekly. Excellence like this takes a lifetime to achieve. So when athletes you've been watching all your life reach for world levels of competition, why not spend some quality time and just enjoy the show? Don't miss the 2011 U.S. World Team Trials, June 9th through 11th in Oklahoma City. Brought to you by ASICS, the official sponsor of USA Wrestling's national teams. Reserve your tickets now. Well, with the U.S. Open coming to Cleveland April 7th through the 10th, we profile some of the star wrestlers who will be competing this year. USA Wrestling's Jason Bryant recently caught up with Robbie Smith, one of the nation's top Greco-Roman wrestlers at 211 pounds. Here's resident Greco-Roman athlete Robbie Smith preparing for the U.S. Nationals at 96 kilos. Had a pretty good season. You won the Sun Kissed. And what are you looking for as far as uh, the U.S. Nationals coming up here in Cleveland? Um, you know, I'm um, going in... Uh, a top seed this hopefully this year I'm uh, trying to win it this year I always trying to win it every year um, I feel good um, training my, my training's going great right now uh, everything's going really great right now I feel, this, this is gonna be the first time I go into the US Nationals healthy I've always had an injury I either a concussion or a hurt shoulder or something so this is my first year I'm going in healthy um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Plus, I got the, the mustache power going on this year again. Uh, last year, it gave me some pretty good power after I didn't make weight, and then I went up to heavyweight. I took fourth still. So, you know, I'm trying to go back this year and win it at 96 and uh, with the mustache and make, the, make everybody proud, you know, especially Coach Momir. He's my uh, idol when it comes out to mustaches. So are, are you like Samson where you derive your power from your hair, but this time being your facial hair? You know, I, but for me, it's more, it, it, it's inspiring to other people. And when it's inspiring to other people, you know, it, it, it inspires me. And, uh, you know, me and Chaz are doing it for Mustache March. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, it's doing really well right now. It's, it's coming in thick. Um, I'm pretty proud of it, you know. But it, 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 it is what it is. Uh, but it's, I'm having a good time with it, but, but you know, Nationals, I think, is going to be a good tournament for me. And uh, I hope it's my coming out party to, to the country saying, you know, hey, I'm here. 
I want to, I want to, I want to take this and I want to roll with it. You know. What's been the difference in you in preparation and training? You say you're healthy for the first time. Why is that? What have you done to make sure that you're 100 percent? You know, I mean, I just been having bad luck the past couple of years. I get knocked in the head and get a concussion, or I'll get my knee. I'll have somebody roll up on my knee and I'm out. And so this year I've been, you know, rubbing my uh, rabbit's foot and you know having everything go right for me and. Uh, it's just, it's all, it, it's right now everything's connecting right now. And yeah, the stars are aligning and hopefully they align on the right day and I can win nationals. So that's my big, that's my big goal this year. A couple guys that have been on the world team that are also in the weight class, Justin Ruiz, bronze medalist for the world championships and RC Johnson. What's it gonna take for you to try to, you know, move past those guys? Yes, you've got a higher ranking right now. You've beaten guys that have beaten them, but in order to beat those guys straight up, what are you gonna have to do? You know, uh, I feel I've put in the work and I've put in the time. And, um, you know, they are very good competitors. And I've never beat Justin. I beat RC for the first time uh, on the flash trip. And uh, I feel I'm closing that gap. And once I get that gap closed, I feel, you know, I can run with this, with this weight class. And um, it, it's, it's being confident in myself. And I respect them a lot. But at the same time, I got to, you know, respect myself and, and know I can do it. You know, I respect Justin 100%, and uh, he's a great wrestler. And he's, I, when I first moved out here, he took me under his wing and taught me a lot. And uh, he's still teaching me today. And RC, the same way. He, he's been out here since I came out here. And uh, he's taught me a lot, too. But, you know, I feel it's my time, and I need to step up. I need to do it, and I can't wait for anybody else to do it for me. So. Well, members of the U.S. Olympic Education Center's Greco-Roman team and women's freestyle team traveled together for a joint international training camp in Monterey, Mexico recently. It was one of the first times that the USOEC has sent both men and women to an international training camp together. Well, they were nine men and eight women wrestlers on the tour, along with the USOEC assistant coach Tony DeAnda in freestyle and Willie Madison in Greco-Roman. The teams trained with Mexican athletes in their Olympic Training Center, which has facilities for 20 sports. The building where the USOEC wrestlers trained also hosts several other Olympic combat sports. The Greco-Roman athletes trained with the Nueva Leon Greco-Roman team, which had a talented Cuban coach. And for the USOEC women, it was their first training camp in Latin America after other training opportunities in Europe and Asia. The joint training sessions provided a great learning environment for wrestlers on both USOEC teams, as well as their Mexican Wrestling Federation hosts. Each week, USA Wrestling Weekly recognizes a photo of the week. These pictures are sent in by wrestling families and fans around the country. They are also being considered for the photo contest page in USA Wrestler Magazine, as well as the USA Wrestling Facebook page. This week's USA Wrestling Weekly Photo of the Week is taken by Denise Pikus. It shows 13-year-old Matthew Pikus of the Chattahoochee Junior Cougars from Georgia competing at the Kell Longhorn Classic Tournament. To have your photographs considered for USA Wrestling's photo contest, email your images to Gary Abbott at gabbott at usawrestling.org. Two leaders from the wrestling community, athlete Kenny Monday and referee Rick Tucci, headline the 2011 class of the National High School Hall of Fame. Kenny Monday was a four-time state champion and never lost a match while wrestling at Booker T. Washington High School in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Monday finished with a 140-0-1 record and won Oklahoma State titles at four different weight classes from 77 to 80. Monday won a NCAA title at Oklahoma State in 1984, a gold medal at the 1988 Olympics in Seoul, South Korea, and a silver medal at the 92 Olympics in Barcelona, Spain. Monday also competed in the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia. He's currently a club coach at Oklahoma State. You know, and it's an incredible honor. I'm definitely um, you know, happy about it, pleased about it, honored to be inducted into the national uh, high School Hall of Fame. Rick Tucci has been an accomplished wrestling official at the state, national, and international level for 30 years now. He's officiated 23 Florida High School Athletic Association State Wrestling Championships and has been Florida's wrestling rules interpreter since 1976. Tucci has been president of the USA Wrestling Officials Association since 86. Tucci has officiated seven Olympic Games and more than 60 world championships. He's worked more Olympic matches than any other American official. He's also a FILA instructor for officials as well. Well, the National Wrestling Media Association, the National Professional Organization for Wrestling Journalists, has named the recipients of its annual, annual Wrestling Journalist Award during the NCAA Championships in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Print Journalist of the Year is Jim Nelson of the Waterloo Cedar Falls Courier. 
Nelson covers wrestling on all levels and is considered one of the most talented wrestling reporters in the nation. The broadcaster of the year is Shane Sparks of Badger State Wrestling. Sparks provides extensive video broadcast coverage of wrestling in the state and has done many national events as well. The publicist and sports information director of the year is Amanda Dahl of the NEIA. Dahl has brought new energy and skill to promotion of the sport. Her mentor, Tom Crochelle of Iowa State, accepted her award. The photographer of the year is Tony Nordland of the Matt Slap, who has shot wrestling photography now for some 30 years in New York. Website of the year is Flow Wrestling, which has uh, setting a standard for internet video coverage of wrestling providing coverage of the sport on all levels. Now, the publication of the year is The Gear Team, which covers wrestling on all levels in the state of Minnesota and is owned by Jeff Bishi. An NWMA special award was given to Craig Sesker, the author of Bobby Douglas, Life and Legacy of an American Wrestling Legend. It's one of the top wrestling books released this year and currently on my personal bestseller list. Stay tuned, there's more USA Wrestling Weekly when we return. Wrestling fans, USA Wrestling has launched a top social networking site designed for you. USA Wrestling Nation is the latest innovation provided to the wrestling community by our sports national governing body, USA Wrestling. Post photos, blogs, and videos. Interact on boards. Keep up with your favorite wrestling personalities with USA Wrestling Nation. It's free to register. Join the thousands of wrestling fans that have already signed up and become a part of the USA Wrestling Nation at USAWrestlingNation.com. This week, our weekly technique segment comes from the USA Wrestling Olympic Styles Core Curriculum Series. It features the stuff head cheap tilt technique. The technique is instructed by USA Wrestling National Freestyle Developmental Coach Bill Zadek. The athletes demonstrating the move are U.S. Olympic Training Center residents Angel Cejudo and Philip Simpson from the U.S. Army World Class Athlete Program. Here, Angel's gotten into Phillip's leg and beaten his position. As Phillip squats to drop his hips, he's also going to stuff Angel's head down while clearing his feet back and getting his hips in. Stuffing his head is a great way to break Angel's position and clear his feet back and away. Squats, stuff the head, clear his feet back. Hips are in. Notice the nice arcing position that Phillip is in. It's keeping a lot of weight on top of Angel. Also from the head to the outside position, very similar. He's going to square his hips, stuff Angel's head down in a way to clear his legs and hips back. Often we see a cross face in this situation, which I think is a good technique. After I've stuffed his head and cleared my hips, now I can grow cross face. We want to be careful of cross facing too soon with our hips in the air. For Angel, it will be easy for him to drive up to the position. Phillip's going to want to stuff his head down in a way to break his opponent's his base position. Now he can go cross face. You know, his, his secondary offense is here. Tickets are now available for the 2011 World Team Trials held in Oklahoma City June 9th through the 11th at the Cox Convention Center. The winners earn the right to represent the United States at the 2011 World Championships in Istanbul, Turkey. Among the stars on display will be past world champions Christy Davis and Jamil Byers and Clarissa Chun. World medalists Jake Herbert, Tatiana Padilla, and Travel Delegnab are expected to compete as well. Oklahoma is a hotbed for amateur wrestling and has developed numerous world and Olympic medalists, and a large crowd is expected for this exciting event. For more information about the event, we invite you to look for it online at theworldteamtrials.com. As always, thanks for joining us. I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you all next week right here on USA Wrestling Weekly.